started Make Life Fun podcast because I needed more fun in my life. When I became a mother, I, for some reason, just put on this like high ponytail, mom jeans, and nose to the ground. I wasn't having fun. It wasn't until I started having fun that it started becoming easy. Fun and mental health go hand in hand for me. I've been in this mental health game my whole life. <laughs> and I am so lit up to like help other people. I'm so lit up for other people to experience this because it's what my wish and my mission is for every woman is to find safety within themselves because it took me a long time to get here. Hi guys, welcome back. Today we have Anya Simmons. She is a mom, wife, podcaster, and author. Anya is the host of Parenting Differently, the podcast, and she is the author of Parent from This Place. She will be talking about her journey to finding and centering herself using yoga practices. She now coaches other women into grounding themselves and being present in the moment. Anya, thank you so much for being here today. Tell me a little bit about yourself and what you would love to talk about on the show. My training was as a British nanny, and that's actually how I, I'm in Canada now. I thought I knew everything about parenting because I had raised kids. I had been a nanny in Europe. I had then come to Canada as a nanny. We were in big demand back in my 20s as a British nanny. And so when I came to parenting, I just, it was just something I did because I I knew I wanted to be a mom and had always been around kids. And everyone said, oh, you're so good with little kids. And this was my journey. And I have two kids now. They're big. One is 23, about to be 24. And one is 20, about to be 21. And I had no idea how actually full on overwhelming and entangled I would be as a mom mm-hmm. and the realization that actually I knew really lit very little I had the structure but I never ever thought of or had been told about this heart to heart connection and about really really valuing this little person and so as a nanny, I had, you know, I was fun. I, I enjoyed stuff, but we had some real structure yeah. and it was kind of a blanket thing for every kid, depending on their age. And it never dawned on me that these are individual souls. It never it dawned on me that mm-hmm. this works here and no, oh, no, doesn't work <laughs> at all over here. <laughs> Two very separate beings I have, right? So that was really my uncovering and my journey. And then I started taking yoga. While I was, I think my kids were like five, four, five, six, somewhere in there, just with a friend. And I thought, oh, she was teaching. And I thought, oh, okay, I'll go, you know, time away. How lovely. And that fully, fully unwound me even further into finding who I was and really realizing that parenting is actually not about the child. It's about us, Mm. It's about us being raised together. If you're conscious, if you want to really learn more and a lot of what I wanted to say or my old beliefs or the old belief of parenting top down I'm the mom I'm the dad you do what I say just didn't work and then so my whole kid's childhood and I feel like it was my childhood relearning of just like wow what what really works where is that intuition right where is that knowledge I love that that you said like it's all consuming it's all overwhelming like it's like you don't know that you have this much love inside of you for yeah. like, you just don't know. And so I love that you talked on that. And I would love for you to talk on that a little bit more. How did you start to cultivate that and work with that? So I think it was the discovery on my yoga mat that I found little moments and little pieces of me, right? Or little moments that I was like fully in that presence and not needing anything else, not not searching, not criticizing, not judging based on other people, like just those, those really, really brief moments. And I think that being present to those, taking it off the mat, helped me be really present to my babes, right? To my kids. Oh yeah. I love that you talked about yoga and cultivating presence. Cause I think that's where it kind of started for me as well in yoga and learning like oh my gosh, I could just be here. Like what a concept that we're not taught at all. Like what a concept that we could just be here. And so as I've become a mother, that's shown up for me even more of being present because he doesn't know tomorrow, yesterday. He's like fully. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a beauty if you can meet them there. Mm -hmm. right and and really they'll demand it and demand it and demand it to meet them there but we push against it right because we have stuff to do we've got things to do I want my own mind a moment I want to I've got to make dinner oh no now you're hungry and (laughs) 
it's a lot of that to-do <laughs> list and it's always constantly playing in our mind too. Yeah. And this makes me think of a crazy story. I have a mom friend who she was like, I neglected doing the dishes today. I neglected doing laundry today. And I watched a movie with my child and I feel guilty for not getting all these things done. Yeah, we're and, raised that way. We're, we're, society tells us that's those are important things and your kids are just the a part of it, but not the thing, right? I felt like my heart almost broke a little when she oh. said that because I was thinking in my heart, like your child isn't going to remember that that house, the dishes weren't done, the laundry wasn't done. What they're going to remember is that you sat with them. You watched that movie with them. They might not even remember it consciously, but they're going to know that you were there. That you saw them. Yeah, that you were with them. I agree. And I think there's this misconception of, you know, our kids don't need us fully present all the time. That's, That's crazy if we think that's what we're trying to strive for. But they do need it some of the time. Yeah. And it can be just a few moments, mm-hmm. right? Especially as they get older and with a baby and breastfeeding, you know, they're sort of around you all the time. <laughs> but, you know, I noticed as my kids got bigger and I wasn't so yeah, aware of where they were, what they were doing, that they just needed that, that connection somewhere. Mm-hmm. And we so often, myself included, and I've seen many parents do it, we're only partly there. Where they're going, yeah, yeah, you did what? Yeah, yeah, okay, hang on. And because we're busy and that's going to happen. That's life, right? But where can we strive to every day be fully present for, say, five minutes, yeah. right? Really look in the eyes, really be aware of what they're saying, what they're doing. Like you say, sitting and watching a movie it could is a connection. Mm-hmm. It really is. And yeah, it really is just being present and it's practicing something. That's what, when mm. you were saying that to me, it's like, even for five minutes, if you start doing that day to day, that five minutes will start to expand. And then the next thing, you know, I feel like you'll just be living a more present life in all areas of your life because you've been practicing. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I think ultimately I'm at the other end of parenting now, right? (laughs) But ultimately what is the future you, you want with your child, right? What is the connection? I like that my kids kind of some of them want to hang out with me you know I like that they would call me they want to share part of their day that builds from from little ones Mm -hmm. right and you you're right it's a practice and I think it's even harder for the younger generations from when I had because but we didn't even have cell phones so there wasn't that and and being with little kids and stuff and it's it's boring at times Mm -hmm. it's it's not necessarily mind fulfilling and we think you know my god I'm a bad mom because I'm no it's a lot of hours of the same 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 right and so it's easy to get distracted and use our lovely phones right we don't have phones but I'm sure found many other ways to be distracted right like you said it's a practice of really having that time you know and know that you you touch base you Mm -hmm. you really got to be with them that's what grows healthy individuals I believe that's what grows people who feel good about themselves as they go out into the world that's the dream that's I think what every mother, every father, that's Mm -hmm. the dream. That's what we want. I think more than anything is we want them to grow up to be loving themselves, to be loving other people. So how, like you said, you're on the other end. So like enlighten us, like help (laughs) us, especially the ones of us that are starting from ground zero. So I think my biggest awakening was that I lost myself in motherhood. And some of that came from the nanny stuff that I just had such a, this is how a mum needs to be. But for sure it's society, for sure it's parents, our parents, you know, everybody telling you. And I realized that the biggest gift actually was to really prioritize and value myself. And I didn't do that when the younger, that I'm as important. And if I want them to feel important, I actually not through teaching and words and blah, blah, I have to live it. Right? I have to live feeling important. I have to be on my to-do list. I have to make sure that I'm, I'm still participating in what brings me joy and what, you know, makes me happy. And I didn't, I, you know, I was one of those people that I cringe at now who say, no, but I just always wanted to be a mother. My kids are what make me happy and my kids bring me joy. That's dangerous. I have to say that is dangerous. That's a big pressure on them. My goodness, what a burden. You, it's you who has to make me happy. It's you that has to fulfill me. So that would be one of my main points I'd love to pass on. And then the second one, if we truly believe that they are individual beings and this is their life, their actual own life journey, as mamas, lean back, 
lean back a little and trust their wisdom. You do not have to fix it all. You do not have to make it all right. You do not have to make it all all perfect. Let them live their life, right? Like lean back. I always think of it in the yoga stuff, right? Like just lean back. You're leaning forward. Like we walk with our chin forward, right? We walk like, oh, I've got to be at and lean back a little. (laughs) Oh, I love that. You say, give them that space and let them have that wisdom to know what to do next. Because I always thought as a baby, babies are just kind of like blobs. They're just kind of (laughs) like, take care of this baby, like do everything for this baby. But what I'm learning now that I have one is he's pretty darn smart and he is pretty aware. And so I have to think that they come here, like you're saying, wise and capable and able. And if we would take that, like lean back, like you were saying, that step back, we give them that power to grow into who they're supposed to be instead of who we think they should be. I think that's not easy. No, no, it's not. It's not. And I, I found even going into the teen years, you know, just all my fears, everything that I was concerned about, like talk about smack me in the face, you know, like, oh, come, come, stay with mommy. Don't anybody leave. I'll keep you all safe. That's a nasty world out there. <laughs> Anytime anybody was mean or nasty, I'm right jumping in there, you know, but you just, it's not, it's not as it's their life, you know, and that's the attachment detachment way of, of, of being right. So that you, for sure, I always want to be that comfortable place to land, mm-hmm. right. I always want to be the place and that they know they could come to, to share something that's, we all like the good stuff, but what about the shitty stuff, right? What about the stuff that's not great? And I want to be that place. Well, I have to open that door early on that that's actually what I'm about they are super wise like I talk with clients and stuff we do like family meetings and stuff right that you can do as they get bigger have them involved and these kids are phenomenal they know how to get out quicker in the morning they would know what would help them right Mm -hmm. all based on the age and the words and stuff but they really they they know it's their life they they know what's going on right and again, like you say, we we come into parenting kind of with these ideas of what kind of parent we will be and what kind of child we'll have. So we've already skipped this whole thing of we haven't even met them yet. Yep, <laughs> we did. We, How about I, we meet them and that yep. individual? Exactly. Like I literally went into motherhood the exact same way of like, this is how it's going to be. I have to take care of this little person. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard and I'm in charge and it's my responsibility. And it just starts to like, almost feels like you're being closed in. It almost feels like it's overwhelming. It's, it's too much. I agree. I agree. And I really, I love that you're saying that because I didn't realize that others felt that same way. Mm. I mean, I found it so hard, uh, my husband too, to pick a name for our children. Like it felt like such a response. Like how could I choose a permanent name for this person who I haven't met, who it's their life. Like I always felt it, it is their life, you know. And a lot of times I think I was judged for being too wishy-washy or not firm enough or not strict enough. And I thought, I'm really trusting that, for trying to find my inner intuition, but also trusting them, you know, and and that's not no boundaries. And that's not, oh, it's a free fall, go ahead, I'll just be your doormat. Not at all. <laughs> I'm not very good at being a doormat. But it was, yeah, it's a, it was that learning that, okay, you know, it's not actually all on me. So my son, what's he, a year, it's a couple of years older than my daughter. And he really wanted to know about letters and reading. And he was always curious about how does this work? Why does this do whatever? And my beautiful daughter comes into the world, couldn't give a shit. She just was floating around, happy with life, happy with playing with a stone, like really a total different personality. And we would be like, no, but you know, you need to know your letters because look how proud he made us. He already knew all his words. And, you know, you take it on and it's so ridiculous. And she really, she really showed us, you know what? I've got my own way. I've got my own journey. You know, I, I'm not following footsteps. And she didn't care less about letters. At school, nursery, they would say, oh, she won't sit in circles. She just lies down. And I'm like, wow. You know? <laughs> but she just, it was that a different awakening of like, this is her journey. Yeah, of course she can read now. Of course she can, you know, she can do things. But it, it's that individualness of, yeah, they don't, it, it doesn't, it's not the same. Yeah, I've heard that from parents that have multiple kids. They say, like, they're like night and day, they're completely different. And I don't know that yet because I haven't really experienced that. But 
it has to be because we're all so individual. We're all so different mm-hmm. that it has to be that our children are the same and they have to, we can't parent one child the same way we parent another child. That seems almost like, <laughs> I'm like, how? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But that is what we're taught. And that's, I mean, I did in all the training I did, but also just society's way of saying, you know, you can have, you'll have family guidelines and family boundaries and things that as a family we participate in or whatever, right? But yeah, definitely. It's, I mean, I know even with my part, my husband and who, whatever your partner, like, you know, two normal humans. <laughs> so incredibly different. Our approach yeah. to everything is completely opposite. So why would we think that? I saw it with my own like upbringing. There was the golden child, <laughs> yeah. my brother. <laughs> and then all of us needed to measure up. And right. because we didn't measure up, it didn't feel good. Yeah, you feel like you're lacking. You're lacking from the start, right? <laughs> yeah, it never felt good. I guess I never was able to articulate why that didn't feel good, but that's because like you're saying, we're all different. We're all yeah supposed to evolve the way we're supposed to evolve. Like we all get to where we're going. Yeah, that, I mean, that's really the beauty, isn't it? And that's hard to allow that to process to happen. And I can see some part because I can say, you, you maybe can relate to this, is with your first it is such a miraculous kind of thing, right? And then you're, and everything from the pregnancy to them, the birth to raising them, it's all a new thing. And I remember like, we just, you know, you sit there and you go, my God, this is a genius. This look, this, <laughs> does anybody else know this baby's learning, right? Like you, you're fully in there. And then you, you know, if you have more children and <laughs> me, I stopped at two, I wanted loads, but I got a puppy instead after <laughs> the two. I realized that was enough my nerves could take. With the second, some of it is not so brand new, right? And then the first is kind of leading the way of how you do things. So the second one kind of, I think actually in the big picture gets a better start in life because we're not so fully, oh, look at them eat, look at them do this, look at them, right? (laughs) They get a little bit of like, oh, oh, didn't know you could, I mean, my daughter kind of toilet trained herself. You know, we weren't even, I was like, oh, hang on, your diaper's all dry. Right? Where's my son? He's like, come on, oh, buddy, let's clap. Let's put a sticker. Let's cheer, right? <laughs> Everything you're saying is kind of, it's hitting hard. <laughs> it's so exciting. Yeah, yeah, and it should be. And how amazing to feel the center of the world, right? That That's a perfect, beautiful place to feel. So I would love to talk more about how you got into this, because I know you said you were nanny, but how you got into yoga and parenting and putting those two together. I've never heard that before. Written a book about it, right? And I kept trying to see what to compare it to. And I'm like, oh, because it's not, it's really, so to answer your question simply, it really was my own journey. And it was yoga that broke down a lot of my walls and made me way more aware. I always thought I was laid back and chilled and everything's fine. And I realized that internally, gosh, I was so full of fear. And that's what I was parenting from, right? Even though my words and my actions maybe were like, yay, I'm so cool. I wasn't, I was uptight and I was so, and so the breath work and being in my body on my mat started to release that stuff you know, started, it took a lot, it wasn't, you know, it's not a one class. <laughs> and I guess, you know, there's millions of kinds of yoga, the different teachers, all of this kind of thing. So it's where you, you know, what, it was the right timing. And it was really that it's been on a journey of self-realization and learning things and curious about things, but it was being a parent and then knowing I wanted to do it differently and knowing I had to actually, and then the journey back into myself, You know, I feel like I was a head walking around with a body for years and years and years. And it was, you know, just something you dressed, you took care of, you worked out or whatever. I didn't have a clue about this real inner love for myself, you know, and I think if we find that love for ourselves, that's how we show up. And if we love ourselves, we just parent differently. We parent from a different place. And so that was the unwinding for me, I think. And I I didn't even realize when I started coaching, I really was coming from my nanny perspective and helping mums with sort of issues and things that were going on. And it, I didn't realize how much of the yoga I was bringing in. You know, here's a meditation, here's a breath work, like simple stuff, like we're busy, right? We, we don't have time necessarily for an hour and a half yoga class, right? But what can I do to bring me back to the present, to find my breath? Even for a second, if I find my breath, 
I show up differently. The words coming out my mouth are different. My energy is different, right? I'm already starting from how I want a parent. Yes, life giving, connecting to your body, like yeah. life giving. I had no idea myself that I was completely disconnected from my body, like to the mm. point where I think my body was like in <laughs> Australia <laughs> and I was here in the States, like totally disconnected yeah. and just walking in autopilot and walking in people pleasing and just like doing, just doing basically yeah. that's period yeah. doing. And it was my awakening. Wasn't until I was starting to learn to connect to my body that I was like, wow, there's a whole different way to be. Yeah. It's just night and day. Like you were saying, walking with a head versus like being fully embodied in who you are. And so like you're, I just, yeah, I definitely connect with that and relate to that. Yeah. And I didn't even know that the breath was a thing. Like at some, I just thought you just breathe, mm -hmm. you know, it's just happening. Right. Yep. And then when you realize, wow, I could actually change the way I'm thinking, the way I'm feeling by using what I have, it's free. Mm -hmm. I have it with me all that I can all do it in the car, on the train, I can walk. I, I, it's with me. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. And that one breath will bring you back to this present moment. If you will just allow yourself to be a witness to it, to be present to it. And like we were talking earlier, it's not going to be constantly you're living in this present moment, but no. the moment that you find yourself like in that headspace of fear, in that headspace of overwhelm and overthinking, and you're like, you know what? I'm just going to take a breath. Just yeah. that one, like, just is enough to just calm your nervous system. Sure, absolutely. You know what? I was teaching for a while kids with anxiety out of a hospital here, a yoga class, right? And they were in a program and I was just doing the yoga section. And it was so interesting because we would, maybe four weeks in, we would then meet the parents. You know, without judgment, I knew which kid went with which parent, mm -hmm. Right. I just you could just feel it and you could just sense it. And we're in this disbelief that no wonder our kids are feeling this way, like no wonder. And, you know, we don't as mums and dads need more guilt and shame and shit put on us. So it's not about that, but it's about, OK, what can I do so that my energy that I enter the room in, let's say 40 percent of the time, <laughs> It's the energy I want to bring there. The kids are less annoying if you're present, right? If you're enjoying yourself, if you feel good, if you're, you're, you've taken care of your soul, right? Kids are less needy or less, you know, demanding, or you can set sort of those boundaries saying, you know what, we're not taking on every activity or I'm not, you know what, I'm going to take an hour for myself. You may not come in my room, right? <laughs> Can't do that as a baby. But, you know, <laughs> like those, you can demand it with a partner help, right? But I'm just saying you... Like, what do we really want out of this? It's not just another stepping stone to move forward. It's raising incredible people, but not incredible for anything they achieve, just for who their little hearts are and who their being is. I love that. <laughs> that gives me the warm feeling. <laughs> it's like, yes, to all of it. That's like the dream for a mom. And yeah. to know that it starts with us. And yeah. I love that you said it's no shame, it's no guilt, but just having that knowing that my energy, the way I'm showing up has so much effect on my little one and on myself. Like, why wouldn't I try? Why wouldn't yeah. I figure out how I could be a little bit more present if it's going to benefit for me every area of my life? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that was the push for me was that it was just so changing that I hadn't, it took me, you know, how life evolves. It took me a few years to realize it was yoga. That was the, the key for me. It was mm -hmm. actually yoga and me unwinding on my mat to love myself more, to be more present, to realize when I'm holding tension, like driving and I'm like, mm -hmm. and I'm not even in a hurry, you know, or I was, you know, the idea we was with kids onto the next thing. Okay, guys, we have 20 minutes and then we have to go and then we have to, and then we're going to eat and that all. And living in that energy, like we spoke right from mm -hmm. the beginning, our kids are not living in that, you know, or we're putting that on there. You know, my, I do not have perfect kids, not at all. And they has had major issues with anxiety and things, you know, so this isn't a clear, you know, this is what you do, but it's like, okay, this is their journey. What can I do about mine? I felt huge guilt to put myself first in anything. I would run to the hairdressers or run to do things and never, and we were, I was working full time and my husband and I have our own business. I, I remember running from work because we live nearby when my baby needed breastfeeding. Now, what did that do to my son, me, right? There was, so, it was empty everywhere. <laughs> there was no me, Anya, anymore. I was mum, 
I just really want to let other young mums know it doesn't have to, it's going to be parts of that, but it doesn't have to be that way because your importance, it shows them that they're important, and that they're of value. Because we'll do it for our kids. We might not do it for ourselves, but we will do it for our kids. <laughs> and in turn, it's a win-win because we're doing it for ourselves as well. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, today I went live in one of my Facebook groups and we were talking about presence and the exercise of presence. So it's a beautiful conversation to be having right now. Yeah. And it's so fitting. So for you in your day-to-day life, do you have things that you're practicing like to get yourself when you're not on the mat, like, is there things that you do to feel more presence? Yeah. Yeah. It's a daily moment to moment kind of thing. Yeah. So it was, I know that I'm nice to me and to the world if I've meditated. Mm -hmm. So for me in the morning, that is, I barely get out of bed. I usually sit up in bed and, and do something, you know, I then, as I feel that I'm in my head a lot, when I feel overwhelmed by just life, I mean, I'm, I'm easily overwhelmed by this and this and this. I work with dropping from my head to my feet and really feeling my feet, feeling them in the sock, feeling them on the carpet, feeling them in the shoe, just gets me out. And I might have to do that a thousand times. You know, I like the mantra, the idea of right here, right now, all is well. I say that to myself a lot. I'll quickly place a hand on my heart and a hand on my belly to just bring me back to me. What else do I do? I love nature. I love getting outside. That really helps fulfill me and make time for just some quiet. I tend to, I guess, and and in running your own business, I tend to always be learning. So even if I'm having a bath, I've got a podcast on, or I've got, you know, I'm in the car, I've got to listen to this. And sometimes it's like, no, you know what? (laughs) Stop, stop. How about you stop for a moment, right? You know enough, that kind of idea. Oh, I love that you just said that, you know enough. I love that you said sometimes you just got to find that silence. Yeah. And I love that's that how you get in touch, too. right? That's, I mean, I, that I really learned was I can't hear me, my thoughts, my intuition, my gut, if it's a lot of noise. I just, I can't. I don't, maybe people can't. I can't. I've got better at it as I've got older, you know, that I can touch in much quicker. But to really know, okay, this way or that way, or is this a good choice? Is this a choice that I'm comfortable with, you know, in life? In, family whatever and so I need those moments of Mm. my girlfriend used to say you know when we had younger kids she says you know what I miss I miss just staring at a blank wall (laughs) just just doing like nothing nothing (laughs) I love that stare just stare at a blank wall I just want to daydream or Mm. a moment of oh gosh do you need this do you need yeah I love that but sometimes yeah you just I love that just sometimes you just need that silence and quiet and if you give it to yourself just even for a moment it yeah can yeah start to benefit you and getting out of your head and into your heart yeah like yeah it sounds simple but it's hard like Mm -hmm. you know it is a practice and it's hard to do but to me it's all about how do I want to be? I don't want to be bitchy and naggy and grumpy. I don't want that to be my natural state. Mm. And I can go there, you know, I don't want to feel that I'm missing out. I don't want to feel that, you know, my kids are not measuring up. I don't want to feel that I, I always notice in those moments when I am trying to control more, when I am trying to control them, control myself, control the situation more. That's my, my, my warning sign of take care of you don't have control here and on times it's you know as the kids are growing up and you're like what are you doing tell me what you're thinking who are your friends you know like who are my friends what am I thinking (laughs) do I wish to be kinder in this world let let me work on that because it's like honestly what can we control yeah what's going on in the outside world is (laughs) completely out of our control yeah it makes a difference and I think like neither of my kids are, are into yoga or breath work or <laughs> any of these things and when they were younger I tried to force them you know that sounds very good with yoga I tried to force them into yoga and I tried to force them into my wisdom and my, what I was learning and you realize the you know the only thing I could do is just talk about how great it feels for me and it was you know that awareness that you just you, it's a fa- it's a mistake it's a fallacy it's not true as parents, we are sort of in a position and society is telling us that we actually can con- like control your kids, put your kids in order, make them good people, make them be nice, make them be smart, make them bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. You know, I really don't. What a pressure. How am I going to do that for another person? You know, they are mean at times. They are nasty. They don't want to work hard at times. You know that? <laughs> Who am I kidding? 
right? That it would be all down to me, like I'm some sort of wizard. <laughs> That's what they teach us. That's what they tell us. Yeah. Like we're in charge of making this good human. Yeah. So I love that you're saying like, it's out of our control. We can love them to pieces. We can be their safe space, but we can't push them. No. Like in my mind, when I had my son, I thought I'm going to teach him how to meditate. I'm going to teach him, like you were saying, all these things that have like been life-giving, life-changing that took me years to learn. Like, I'm just going to teach him from the get-go. And I love that you said like, (laughs) no. They would say to me, oh, stop telling me to breathe. And I'm like, oh, goose. Oh, mash, namash, shavaya. Sorry, I lost my, om namash, shavaya. Uh, go stand in your glory and they're like what the hell what kind of mum are you you don't say that and they'd slam the doors they get out the car right I'm like blessings to the world <laughs> no I don't think but they could probably tell you that they noticed when I was happier mm-hmm. that if I went and did some stretching if I did some yoga if I could tune out if I uh, spent time with friends that really fill me up you know it they would see that side maybe <laughs> I love that you said that we can't push it down their throat we can introduce no. them we can softly encourage them but yeah at the end of the day I love that you said that because in my mind I'm like I have this plan for you <laughs> now you follow along <laughs> I'm gonna help you live an easier life than I did <laughs> That's what we want to do, yeah. but it's so free just to even think it and say, no, I don't no. have that power. No, he would, he would absorb it by you meditating, that that is important to mommy and she meditates. It's very important to mommy that, you know, even though we're feeling overwhelmed with this is what we're going to, you know, like for yourself mm-hmm. and in teaching, I taught years, little kids yoga even. And the breath work and the things, it's so different to adult yoga. It really is. And I know I've whitewashed it. I know my white person, this is not my tradition. I, I, it's a deep, rich, beautiful tradition. It is not mine. You know, I pulled out the pieces that suit, serve me, which we all know is the problem. Those living it is the teaching. I love that you say that. It's living it. That's the teaching. Because, yeah, even if they're not doing it, they're absor- absorbing it in some way even if we don't see it, even if it's not manifested in the way that we wish yeah. that it would be. Yeah. yeah. So that even, oh my gosh, that's like one of my big takeaways is like, oh, awesome. I can't push him and force him to do the things that are working for me. Cause maybe that's not his journey. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think when I, you know, even in my teens, if someone had told me all about yoga, I would have been no way or a load of woo woo nonsense, right? Like it had to come at a time that I was ready for the style that I like, not my mat making it look, look at the pose I can do, but really what, what what do I bring off the mat? How do I live in me? (laughs) How do I stand on my own two feet? Earlier, you were talking about boundaries and setting those healthy boundaries with either your partner or your child. How has living that life of trying to be more present helped you in setting boundaries with your kids and with your significant other? Yeah. I will tell you that I have yet to master it. (laughs) I am pretty wishy-washy. I'm pretty much like they come up with a better idea and I'm like, "Mm, okay, fine. (laughs) So I had to come to terms with actually that's just who I am, right, for some of that. However, there are some, the real true respect, honoring those kind of boundaries of how we talk to each other and how we are and family time and things there's certain things on those that I'm not so open and forgiving or let it change and uh, I mean my husband our whole lot of parenting life had said you're not strict enough you know you're so you let the kids get away because and that is true and I used to think god what's wrong with me I've got to get firmer I've got to be you know these really strict boundaries but it didn't sir it doesn't work for me and if, if a child had a better idea Uh, which they often did you know to solve a situation or to make it better I mean they are the worst critics when you when they have mouths and (laughs) learn to speak you know that's hard but that's me working on my own self-esteem and confidence so I haven't been the best at that and I I do wish when they were younger my boundary of my own time from just me was top of the list like not even somewhere on the list top of the list this is my time I'm out for whatever it be, even go for a walk myself. I think, okay, I'll go for a walk by myself. And then they'll, I want to come, I want to come. And then you think, like, oh, okay, well, well, you know, it's a different walk, right? It's not a walk of tuning into me. It's like, mind the road. Oh, I want to play in the park, right? It's just different. And so I think had I been stronger in who I am when they were younger, that would have been a clearer boundary. And I think a lot of the times 
we're told like be stricter like you're not doing it right and even by our own part like you said by yeah. our own oh, partner yeah. by our own parents <laughs> yeah our parents have lots of advice oh my <laughs> horrified me feeding my daughter under the table and <laughs> I was just like but I just want the oatmeal to go in her mouth I don't care where she is in the house I'll follow her everywhere and as a nanny no way are you kidding you sit down and stop being silly and this is where we eat our dinner <laughs> yes. oh my gosh even just that it's so like we're taught from society we're taught from our parents we're taught from the people around us so it's just so hard to know what is the right way to be what is the right way to do and from what I'm getting from what you're saying is it starts with just tuning in and knowing that there's another person there and they have a wisdom within them that we have within ourselves and kind of like an ebb and flow is what I'm kind of getting yeah and actually I never thought of it and so consciously before I was like shit that's yoga right that's (laughs) yoga that's the flow the flow of some days I can do a forward bend and I'm like right to the floor and it feels so fantastic and sometimes my forward bend is basically my head (laughs) that's it that's as far as my forward bend goes right so you know being flexible on your mat perhaps helps you then be more flexible in the real world and I'll give you one piece of advice that I wish I wish I wish I knew a lot of it doesn't friggin matter doesn't matter doesn't matter it works out say food and we're obsessed with food I was always obsessed with them eating healthy and all of this kind of stuff my son he would eat salad as a baby blah 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 how wonderful my daughter bread and pasta that was it for her first two years other than my milk bread and pasta that was it no veggie no apples nothing that you think babies had nope none of that you'd spend so many hours on concerned about this for me it was the food thing could be something else and you realize it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what stroller it doesn't matter whether they go to ballet or they don't you know it doesn't actually matter in the big scheme of things it really doesn't let's let's the lean back and listen listen to them for me it was more important to say my daughter would be fed than sitting at the table and eating nicely she can eat very nicely she we would t- she can manage at the table with knife and fork now you know she is able to be in a restaurant and not be embarrassing like you know I don't feed her under the table any longer you know and you just realize for so much of that those things the mama guilt and the shame and that oh my gosh is this why is this not right I, I I lived with that for so long for every decision I made and now knowing what I know doesn't matter those bits they don't matter it doesn't matter yeah free yourself from that there's bigger decisions (laughs) like that is so freeing to know that it doesn't matter because when you look at I'm gonna go there the Instagram reel of the perfect family they got it all together they're doing all those sports and they've got the you know what I mean Mm -hmm. it's so hard to look at yourself and think it doesn't matter like it doesn't matter I'm doing the best I can. And that's what matters. I'm showing up. I am loving. I'm caring. That's what matters. That's what matters. And that matters massively. Like not Mm -hmm. just a little bit, that matters fully and just incredibly. So I love that. It's just like free yourself. (laughs) Like, honestly, it's like a weight. You could just drop the weight (laughs) and think all you could do is the best you can do. And that's going to be enough. And some days, you can do a little more. Like you were saying that forward bend is going to be all the way to the floor, touch your toes. Other yeah. days it's like barely make it to your knees. And you're yeah. like, that's I'm it's gonna, okay. I'm gonna it's give actually myself okay. Grace. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give myself grace. Yeah. It's and so- it's so interesting what our kids remember. Like my kids will come up with some, I really prided myself on, we didn't have babysitters, that it was just me or my husband. We were both self-employed. We had the same business. So we would do shifts kind of thing. Both my kids talk about, oh, we loved the babysitter we had. And I'm like, what? What babysitter? I never, and then, you know, I think, what, that girl? We had a girl like twice in my, you know, and so it, it just isn't what we think. It doesn't, it doesn't freaking matter. It doesn't matter. Do what feels right. And then you can change your mind and change it tomorrow and do that instead. I love that idea that you can change your mind. And there's that quote that just popped in my head. It's like, when you know better, you do better. So you just do what you can with each day. And then as you learn more, you do more and giving yeah. yourself grace. Cause I, like you said, a lot of shame, a lot of guilt, oh, a lot huge. of like, it's my responsibility. Like, so much Everything. heaviness, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And from our conversation, it's just like ease. And I love it. <laughs> like, yes, 
more ease. Yes. More love. Yes. More fun. Yes. More connection. Like that's what we need in motherhood. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it's so much, there is so much more togetherness in mums. There's obviously there's, there's still what was happening when mine were little is happening the same, you know, shaming other mothers. Oh, look, I'm so proud. Look how pretty my kids look. Look at all these things. And those are the pieces where we have to look inside you know, why do I feel like I'm shining brightly because my son got into this program, right? Why what he achieves or doesn't achieve or what he does is not me. So when he doesn't, it's also not me. I remember we, if I can jump in with a story, but I remember yes. when he was little, but I remember being out with another a mom and her son. And I always thought, oh my gosh, her son just is so obeying. <laughs> he just does what he's told him. Anyway, something had happened and my son, it was really that he should say sorry. And she was really waiting for my son to apologize. Well, he was not interested in apologizing. And I remember sitting there going, just say sorry. Just just say it. Don't worry. You don't have to. Just say it. Please just say it. Say sorry. And then I'm kind of like, oh, he is sorry. (laughs) Like, what the hell? You know, because it was so, please show that I'm a good mom, that I've taught you how to say sorry. Please say sorry. You you don't have to mean it. Just move your lips, you know. And I was so caught on that. And it would make me, me laugh afterwards whenever I would share the story. So I was able to find the humor in it. But I would catch myself so like, Please don't think I'm a bad mom. I have taught him. He does know empathy. He does know how to say sorry. <laughs> you need people around you that are willing to go in the mess with you, right? That are willing to say, God, it's hard today. I just, I don't want to get one more snack. Oh my God. I don't want to have to, you know, wipe one more runny nose or one more bum, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's, and I didn't have that around me. And partly I think, well, I know was that I was so judgmental because I felt that I was, the only one who could save and help my kids, right? That I also was so judgmental of the mums around me. So I wouldn't have given the space open. There were a couple of really good friends and that we showed the messes of, but for most of them, I really wanted you to think I was a good mom. I was so attached to that. And then you go to yoga, aparigraha, right? Yama, niyamas, and it talks about attachment and non-attachment. If I'm going to really be honest with myself, I want you to represent me. I want you to tell me that I'm good, that I'm worthy, that I, you know, to be a good mom is the biggest, like, well, accolade, we think. No, you're a good mom lover because you show up every day and you try your hardest and you are willing to fail and you're willing to try again. And every friggin' day, there's a lot of days, there you are again, (laughs) you know, that makes you a good mom. Yes. Oh, I love that. That's just like speaking life, <laughs> speaking life <laughs> to a mom to hear these things because these are not the things you hear. No. Like it does. It feels like a competition. Yeah. It feels yeah. like that is the title. Good mom. Like how mm. can I be the best mom? Like yeah. the moment they're born. Yes. How was your birth? Did you have a good birth? Did you, you know, did you take medicine? Did you not take medicine? Like nobody cares, you know, doesn't matter. This is my experience. Right? Yeah. Wow. It's so easy, but it's so hard at the same time. Yeah. Because and it's our work, right? Yeah. Your inner work to be okay with you. Let's that's all of that other it. nonsense. Yeah. Quieten down. That is it. That is it. And so often the women I work with, like, I'm such a bad mom. I did this today. Like, I'm such a bad mom. Like that word comes out so effortlessly. Yeah. Yeah. It's so heartbreaking. It is. It really is because you would never speak to anybody else how you speak to yourself in those things, right? And the standard and the expectations we set for ourselves are not even reachable. We are human, right? We are, we've got many things on our plate. There's many things in this shitty world. There's some amazing things in this world, right? There's a lot that comes in. You are not in a bubble. You know, I used to, I actually wrote this in my book and afterwards I thought, oh, perhaps I should have taken that out. But it was, I wished at one point, I thought, gosh, if there's somebody could kidnap my kids, but this person is, is safe and beautiful and fun, like Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, like <laughs> just gorgeous and just take them away so that I can do some healing of myself and show up as that mom. And that kind of says it all really, you know, in that, no, that we're being raised together. The healing is when it comes up, it comes up. Yeah, maybe you can take a break. Maybe you can go, if you're lucky to go somewhere for a weekend or do something. But it is the learning and as you go along, that, that that's the life. 
that's how it goes yeah Yeah, there's there's not an end you don't get there and no longer you don't reach a particular we always had that in our yoga teaching too and in teaching on the mat like you people would say oh how good am I at yoga and it's like what (laughs) what is the standard what are we sticking to are you in your body are you breathing are you flowing with your life force and just kind of connecting then you're doing great because they'd say oh I'm do I need another level do I need to up my level huh and that that's parenthood and motherhood and all of that too when when do I get that stamp of approval that I've now moved on and I can twist all the way like an owl all the way around my body <laughs> like you were saying it's like even in entrepreneurship it's like when you start as like an entrepreneur all by yourself you're thinking I should be good already. I should have this already, but it isn't until you show up. Like, is it until you show up that you're like, okay, like trying to stream from zoom into Facebook. It isn't until you try it, you realize it doesn't work. And like, you got (laughs) to do some more things. Like you have to do the work to know what works and what doesn't work. And absolutely. That's That's such a wow light bulb moment. (laughs) You have to be there living it, doing it. And then you learn more as, yeah. that part of it yeah it's just life you show up and you do the best you can absolutely and the style of yoga I was taught in is called Kripalu yoga and it's really the the other word for it they talk about is compassionate self-acceptance mm. and I think that when I started that is what I needed that was a huge link that I was missing compassionate self-acceptance for me as I am in all my messy imperfect nonsense <laughs> accepting forgiving moving on allowing yep self-acceptance I once I learned what that even was like you were saying like I didn't even know that was a thing Mm -hmm. I didn't know self-compassion like you hear that word self-love get thrown around and you don't really know what it means but it really is that self-acceptance piece it's like accepting where you are on your journey accepting who you are right now and it wasn't until I started to figure that out for myself that I was like oh my gosh this is the game changer this is it this is the life practice Mm -hmm. yeah and a change around I used to have because some days when it's really overwhelming you're just like oh god I have to get up in the night oh I have to you know there's there's moments that you're like oh it's so lovely and moments when you're like no no way and was this change in mindset where you say I get to mm-hmm. rather than I have to that was like a real light bulb for me going I get to witness this I get to feed you I get to be in your presence like it's it's such a privilege to be part of someone else's life from the beginning to look into their eyes and see the way they think and see the way that what their hands do and stuff I mean freaking miracle (laughs) it's a miracle exactly that was the word that cropped in my head like it every day I'm in amazement every day I'm inspired all like wow beautiful like (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but the best work I think I did before having this child was the work that I did on myself. Like I didn't know that it would be that you were preparing for. Yeah, I had no idea. I thought I was just healing my past trauma and I was trying to figure out who I was, but that work that wow, like that was the best work I could have done to prepare to be a mom. That is the best work I do every day to be a mom. Mm. So I love that we're speaking on this. I love that we're sharing this with that, this message because it needs to be heard. I it needs so. to be felt because a lot yeah. of what you were saying was just like, wow, okay, thank <laughs> you for saying that. I needed to hear that. Cool. It's like nothing that, because you know it, you hear it. Like you, if mm-hmm. you're in this community of conscious, like parenting, conscious living and mindfulness, you hear it, but to like hear it again and again and again, it just always I hits a little different. Yeah, you need to, yeah. different angle to it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So please tell us about your book and the name of it, because you were talking about it, yoga and parenting and yeah. Yeah. So it's called Parent from This Place, How Yoga Changed the Way I Parent. Mm -hmm. It just came out in September. So I'm a new author. The whole thing was very new. Thank you. Thank you. I'm I'm really proud of it. Like it was, it's incredibly vulnerable. I kept thinking, oh no, I don't want anyone to read it. (laughs) I want to write a book, but I'd I'd like no one to read it. And then my mom's reading it, my dad, I'm like, oh, okay. But it's that journey on the mat and off the mat. It was my my awakening to being a conscious parent. It was my awakening to myself. It's it's really a lot of what we spoke about is in there, you know, noticing areas as I raised them different ways that I realized 
I was getting in the way. I was interfering. I was controlling. I was coming from a full fear place. That's not how I don't want, I don't want to raise them that way, right? I didn't want to have that as in their souls, in their cells. And within the book, what I was so happy with the editor was we made these pages called Pockets of Pause. And after each chapter, there's just, you could open it at any at the end of any chapter. And there is that moment, a pose, a breath work, a mantra that you could just, doesn't have to be an hour and a half class. There's a, can just be brief moments. And that can really make a difference. You could stand and do a pose while you're cutting carrots, right? You can do something that you're back in your body and letting your heart lead. So, and I do mention the what I talked about before, a bit of the flow philosophy in there, the yamas and the niyamas. Based, I don't have to get into the details, but there's a little bit in there too for how does that show up in your parenting? How does that show? How did that show up for me in my parenting when I think that I'm a non-stealer or that I'm not good with being not attached? And really interesting. My, where's my truth? Whose truth? Hang on a second, <laughs> right? So there's that part in there too. And yeah, yeah, I'm re- really happy with it. It's available oh, on Amazon. That is Thank so, you. that is so needed. And like you're saying, where does this place, like, where does it fit? And it's something that is so needed that there it was needed to be created by you. So thank, thank you for creating oh, that. Thank you so much. I, I just that. see, I just see it. Like I see the I see the connection for Mm -hmm. presence and that non-attachment and serving yourself and pouring out from that overflow. And it's just all so good. And I want everybody to get that book. I'm going to get that book. Oh, wonderful. Wow. I'm so touched. Thank you. That I could use in my everyday. And I love that moment of pause. Like you were saying at the end of the chapter, because sometimes you're reading and you're reading and you're reading and you don't even yeah, you don't even embody us. it you don't even digest it it's just yeah. like going on to the next one so I love that you even intentionally did that moment of pause so you could take in what you've learned and actually put it into practice which is life-changing when you start doing those yeah moments. I think also I came from a place when, when I was working with it of it being a really easy book we're, we're busy right we're busy we're on the run you can shove it in your purse you can pick it up and open it at any place right you can just read from there it doesn't necessarily it's not you know it doesn't matter it's not a start to finish many of them have said that they felt I gave them permission mm. almost to be and to take a pause and to connect to themselves and I'm like wow okay my, <laughs> my job is done yes. <laughs> That is huge. And, and I wish when I was younger that I knew those things. Yeah, I'm so um, inspired by all you young mums sort of on the path of doing it differently, you know, yes. and that for me, that is just holding out hope for this wonderful big world we live in, mm. that there is that change. Yep. I knew yeah. there had to be a different way than the way I was parent. And I think that's why it took me so long to become a parent because it seemed so hard. It was hard. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Being raised in that way and seeing my parents work so hard that I was like, there has to be a better way. Thank you for inspiring us and thank you for showing us and creating a book that shows your journey so that we can emulate and learn from you. I want everybody to support you. So are you on social? Where can we find you? Yeah, I am. I'm on Instagram is is mostly where I enjoy being Mm -hmm. uh, in social media words. And I'm a a parenting success coach is my tag there. I have a podcast also called Parenting Differently. Mm -hmm. And I interview parents who are doing it differently, who have chosen to do it differently and not necessarily differently in the way we expect you know, and not in the, definitely not in the yoga world, a bit of everything. I'm hoping those words out there to give parents who want to seek something a little different, uh, an opportunity to just, there's so much wisdom in people, you know, who've been there, who've gone through it. We all have our own wisdom too. Yeah. Thank you so much, Josie, <laughs> for having me. Thank you so much for being on the Make Life Fun podcast and sharing your wisdom with us. And we'll put all your information on the show notes. And thank, thank you. you for being you really. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad we connected. It's weird how the wonderful world works. <laughs> meant to be. <laughs> there you go. You thank have you a so wonderful much. rest of your day. Thank, thank you. you and you. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun podcast. I am so filled with joy to have you here. If this show resonates with you, I have a gift for you. If you're feeling stuck, this freebie may be just what you need. I believe that if you know your why, it helps you get unstuck quicker. 
So to connect with your heart and know your why and figure out what it is that is most important to you, get the freebie. It's in the show notes. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast to get notifications each week. To support the show, you're invited to leave a tip in the tip jar. Information for all this is in the show notes. Sending love and light to the spirit listening to this today. Be blessed.